I'm sorry guys. I'm sad to say that over the past few weeks, I've been watching our new colony of golden spiny ants. We've named the Blades of Midas in their new terrarium home and have a look at what I've been seeing. Tons of dead ants being carried around. It's always super sad when an ant colony fails to adapt well to captivity, which in ant keeping can happen for a number of reasons. Perhaps the colony might not be adjusting to the captive diet I've been offering them. The roaches and superworms, though gut loaded, might simply not be nutritionally enough to sustain the demands of the ants. Perhaps the environment, which we so carefully crafted to the best of our ability to cater to their biological lifestyle, was not conducive to the survival of the colony. It was with a heavy heart that I concluded this week that the Blades of Midas, our beloved golden spiny ants, were on the road to fizzling out in numbers, and I was preparing to tell you all in this week's video. Well, AC family, that was until I made a certain epic discovery, completely by accident, that totally changed everything. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. AC family, man has it been an emotional week for me. You guys won't believe the incredible discovery I made just yesterday regarding our Blades of Midas, our golden spiny ant colony. So do keep on watching until the end for the twist surprise. But for those of you who are new and just joining us, just to recap, earlier this month, I was given this large colony of a couple hundred ants known as Polyrachis ants, more commonly known as spiny ants. They're called spiny ants due to their awesome body spines, which characterize the genus, in which there are actually hundreds of diverse species. This particular species has an awesome shiny gold color, and we all fell in love with the colony at first sight. So I went straight to work and began to build them a terrarium kingdom fit for a golden spiny ant colony, complete with soil, plants, rocks, and driftwood. The finished product looked splendid, and we called it Polyraxia. Polyraxia was perfectly designed to house the blades of Midas and cater to their very unique nesting behaviors. You see, another thing that makes our spiny ants special, other than their spines, is that spiny ants in the wild create these awesome nests above ground, among sticks, onto rock walls, and in trees, using collected mud and debris all glued together using the silk from their larvae. Spiny ants have always been a dream of mine to keep because of these cool mud and debris nests. And I just always dreamed of having a spiny ant colony in a terrarium full of these awesome debris nests. Only problem was, nearly all attempts I tried in the past failed. My spiny ant colonies would die out and not last past a few weeks to a few months. I had so much hope that this time around, the Blades of Midas would prevail and become that thriving spiny ant colony I always dreamed of. Which is why, AC family, my heart completely sank this week when I noticed this looking into Polyraxia. This is what Polyraxia looked like as of a few days ago. Not much change. The plants were all adapting well to the soils and growing healthily. The soils themselves were sustaining a new thriving population of isopods. Polyraxia as a bioactive terrarium was doing extremely well. But as for the ants, in the weeks leading up to now, I was hoping that the colony would move out of this crumpled up paper towel, which was part of their original container they came in, as well as this AC test tube also part of their original setup. You see, I was banking on the ants setting up their iconic mud debris nests somewhere high up in the driftwood, either here to the right of the terrarium or somewhere here on the left. But after four weeks of waiting for the ants to construct, I saw no iconic mud nest being built. But there was one thing I noticed more and more that as the weeks went on, brought a worrying feeling to the pit of my stomach. AC family, look. 
ants carrying dead bodies. At first it was just a few, maybe four or five workers carrying the dead around. But as time went on, the dead became more and more. This week I counted about 20 dead worker ants being carried around. No! Were the worker numbers of the Blades of Midas decreasing drastically? Well, there was only one way to find out. A couple members of your AC Senate, i.e. revered members of this channel, whom you can actually see in the comment section with colored badges next to their names, who get special sneak peek access and perks to the behind the scenes stuff for the channel, advised me in a community tab post to try removing pieces of the crumpled paper towel bit by bit. And so AC family this week, in order to see if the Blades of Midas were truly decreasing in numbers and were on the road to dying out, I decided it was time to try to dissect the paper towel. Could the hundreds of workers that we initially placed into Polyrexia be simply hiding still within this crumpled bunch of paper towel? Or was the colony truly dying out? If we didn't see hundreds of spiny ants within this paper towel, then we knew for sure our beloved Blades of Midas had failed to adapt under our care. I held my breath as I grabbed one part of the paper towel and gently lifted it up. Nothing underneath, just some isopods. I could see some gravel glued to the bottom with ant silk. There were a few ants reacting to the disturbance of my hand, but not hundreds. I began to pull apart the paper towel to access the inside. I could hear my heartbeat reverberating in my ears. I saw some chambers created with silk and a few ants, but again not hundreds. There seemed to also be a lot of isopods in the chambers. Not a good sign. A leftover roach exoskeleton, some old ant silk, and debris. As I unraveled all the pieces, my heart sank as I knew I had to face the harsh reality. AC family, I'm sorry. The colony had truly died out over the past four weeks. The once hundreds of workers had vanished. It was so sad to add the Blades of Midas to the statistic of polyrachis ants that failed under my care. It's such a disappointing feeling when an ant colony you've been banking on doesn't do well. And even more disappointing having to deal with the feeling that I've disappointed you, AC family. Though I realize that ants dying happens in this hobby of ant keeping, it still doesn't make it any easier. I had such high hopes for the Blades of Midas. Perhaps I just have poor luck with Polyrachis ants, guys and shouldn't take on keeping them again. I resolved to simply keep caring for the remaining survivors, whom I could see were still living within this AC test tube. I estimated there were about 50 or so survivors left in the colony. Such a waste to also have to get rid of Polyraxia, this terrarium. Once the ants had all died out, it was doing so well. The next morning, I noticed one of the sugar test tubes had gone dry. So as I always do, I moved in to replace it. But when I lifted the test tube, my eye caught something peculiar. A smooth surface. Wait a sec. What is that? AC family, do you see what I see? That. It looked like a smooth skin. A membrane! My eyes widened as I began to realize what I was looking at. OMG, this was not just any membrane. This was a silk wall. No way! I removed the second test tube which housed the colony's fresh water. And AC family, what I saw was nothing short of magical. Ants came rushing out of a hole I had made by removing the test tube. What? In fact, removing the test tube had created a long hole, a slot that now revealed a secret and darkened cavernous area that extended far deep into the recesses of the driftwood. 
I then spotted a tiny head of a larva, spinning silk to begin repatching this long hole I had made by ripping away the test tube. An ant came with a piece of debris to help with repair. AC family, this was a nest. The blades of Midas had not died after all. They had secretly been constructing a debris nest right where I had hoped, at this spot in the driftwood, under the test tubes using sphagnum moss. Wow, my dream of having a spiny ant colony building a nest in a terrarium had come true. I tried to make out the borders of the nest. From what I could see, the ants had formed a sphagnum moss ball into an opportune cavity in the driftwood. All this time, a nest was here, and I hadn't seen it. Talk about the ultimate nest camouflage. So sneaky, these ants. There was surely no way an enemy bird or lizard would be able to tell a nest was here. Not even I saw this nest being constructed, and I watched these ants daily. And as for the ants carrying around the dead, perhaps the ants were just dying out naturally. And the queens of the colony were still constantly laying eggs and replenishing the worker force as they normally would. This was all truly heartwarming and such a relief. Our blades of Midas were doing well and had acted exactly as I had hoped they would. As I watched them quickly patch up the tear I had unknowingly made to their moss nest. Now that's an efficient repair team that needs a raise. So, I will continue feeding them the gut-loaded roaches and superworms that I've been giving them, as well as the sugar water and test tubes. And speaking of the water test tubes and sugar water test tube, I decided to tuck them away somewhere out of view. I also finally decided to remove the AC test tube portal from Polyraxia. And as for the ants inside the AC test tube, I also tucked them away out of view, towards the left side of the tank in hopes that they would decide to build a satellite nest there. Wasn't this great, AC family? I began to add a few drops of water to simulate a rain shower over the nest. And man, look at all those ants! There's the hundreds of workers we were looking for. The main colony was certainly living in there, so the nest space inside, I imagine, must be pretty extensive. I knew the ants would benefit from this freshly moistened sphagnum moss. Some ants even drank from the freshwater drops. As I watched the ants swarm, like they were performing a massive spiny ant rain dance around their pretty awesome, perfectly camouflaged moss nest, I felt super lucky that we finally had a spiny ant colony acting exactly as they would have in the wild. Lucky that together with you, AC family, we had this super unique and special peek into the secret lives of these spiny ants like a little chunk of nature that was ours to watch whenever we wanted. In a matter of minutes, the swarm of ants had disappeared back into their cozy moss nest to roost. It's these kinds of moments that remind me why I love being an ant keeper so much. And it also reminded me that in life, regardless of how many times you fail, it's always worth trying over and over again. Because sometimes, you never know when your greatest dreams might actually be in the process of construction right under your nose. Or test tube. It seems the Blades of Midas, our beloved golden spiny ant colony, is on their road to glory. And you better believe I'll be documenting their continued progress as their awesome moss nest and colony expands more and more over time. Thank you all for watching and supporting the ants. It's Ant Love, forever.